Good evening ladies and gentlemen, how are we getting on? Welcome to a brand new camp video. So, this week I decided I wanted to build a kind of traditional house type camp. And uh, I am really pleased with how this one has come out. So yeah, the idea was, as I say, to build a house, a proper house rather than something a bit more ramshackle. And uh, I set about it and it has come out really quite nicely, I think. Definitely pleased with the results. This is quite a big camp and has absolutely hit the limit of the budget. So we're going to tour it for today rather than being here for really way too long. And if you guys would like to see the build, I might do that in a separate video in a couple of days or something. But let's have a look at where we are. As you can see, we are up near Morgantown, just on this little bit of road here. We're just around the corner from a spot I've built a couple of times in the past. Um, and about as close to town as you can get. See a few of the local areas here. But uh, the camp marker is a little bit south of where we actually are here. So uh, worth bearing in mind, but a, a very, very cool spot. And uh, yeah, quite happy with the results here, I have to say. So let's have a look, shall we? There we go. So one of the key things I really wanted to achieve with this was having an interesting shape to the building and an interesting roof. As you see, we've got different angles, different uh, heights and levels and things, and it has come out an interesting shape. It's very, very easy to allow it to become, you know, very uniform and I don't want to say boxy exactly, but for want of a better word, very much like a standard square house, but it's just kind of cool to have like, different angles and things like that. It makes the building look that much more interesting, so definitely happy with how it's come out. So we've got a combination of the rustic greenhouse set, the Helvetia porches, and the responders brick set, I think that's called, for this particular structure. I'm going to have a shifty around the side. We've got a little greenhouse on the side here that I've turned into a kind of conservatory and crafting room. And you sort of see along the edge there where I've run my cabling as well for powering the place. The collectron and my uh, red stag field dressing station on the corner there. A few extra bits of detail to dress it up. Yeah, I've had uh, over the last, well, frankly, a few years, a few people asking how I approach the uh, sort of running of power around buildings and houses and things. And basically getting a little look at it there. We'll have a look at it around the back in a moment. So yeah, I just try and make it neat, tidy, follow along the edge of the walls and keep it out of sight, basically. And that's mostly out of sight. There are other places I could put it, but it would have been a bit more of a struggle and a bit less tidy. So that works quite nicely. Porches, fairly simple out here. Got somewhere to sit, hang out, and we've got my vendor out here. We'll have a look at in a second. So we've got the big greenhouse windows. This is not the rustic set. This is the other greenhouse set, which just looks a little better for the front of the house, I think. So I've got those on there, so a lot of light in. Down here in the corner, we've got a couple of things from the current um, update, the new events specifically. We've got the stash box there, and that's from the new quest, I believe, the cost of business dailies. And the Blue Ridge uh, rug down there is also from the new events, so quite happy to use a couple of bits of that. That stash box is huge, which is cool to use, and I really like that it's a box, but uh, it does take up a lot of room. So heading on into my entrance hall. Relatively basic decoration in here. But it is an entrance hall, so that does kind of make sense. A little bit of accent wall going on there. Could have double-sided this, but I am actually right at the limit of the uh, the build budget. There is nothing left, so... I would have had to kind of sacrifice a couple of bits of decoration for more walls, and this kind of works as a, a better balance, I think. So heading into the lounge. Uh, kind of theme with a lot of this is relatively light on decoration, but really sets the mood, so enough, I suppose. And this is probably the least decorated room in the entire building, but I'm still really happy with how it came out. Got a little bar in there, got a little bartender as well, because, you know, kind of had to. And it's sort of like, I wanted a grown-up kind of hangout, chat, have a drink space for this lounge, and uh, it's come together quite nicely for that. Did debate putting fireplaces in and trying to work with chimneys and stuff, but with the angles on the roof, it would have been a bit weird and with where everything is, it just wasn't going to look quite right. So I'm quite happy with this kind of more chilled out place to uh, sit and enjoy an evening drink or something. It's definitely got that vibe quite nicely. Listen to the radio. We'll close up the door. The door I'm using there, by the way, that's from the Halloween set. It's a haunted house door, but it makes for a nice, clean sort of internal door. So I quite like using that. 
This one obviously is a saloon door, and uh, it's actually locked because I've got an ally in here who otherwise will wander around the rest of the house. I would like to keep her in here, unfortunate connotations notwithstanding. We need uh, Yasmin to stay in the kitchen. Speaking of the kitchen, I really like this kitchen. My initial idea when I built this was to have a big kitchen diner across the back of the house, which is exactly what I've done, and it has come out really, really nicely. I'm really, really happy with it. So we've got the Thanksgiving table there. That's the children's one, because it has the turkey rather than the creepy cornucopia on it. And uh, at the back here, we've got... Uh, these are counter sets from the Tipsy Tom set. And I've just kind of got them too deep at the bottom, and then an extra layer flipped around on the top to create kind of shelving and um, sideboard type vibe but it made a really really nice little sort of unit and counter space to uh, go on the side there thought about a breakfast bar type deal but it would have been a bit odd with the table too so that little sort of sideboard came together quite nicely there's yasmin's cooking station that little gap that the cooking station's in is actually two counters two full-size counter pieces wide and then i took two of them out and then put the small end pieces on either end and it left a perfect size gap just to slide that cooking station into which, um, it's Yasmin's ally station, and it also works as a cooking station as well, so it works really nicely in here. A couple of fluorescent lights for the kitchen, some nice big windows as well. It's also more of the greenhouse set, but it works for kind of half wall style windows. Definitely like that. Nice little bit of uh, contrast with the wooden walls there, kind of follow through from the, the hallway into the, the dining end, and then uh, obviously. And the splash proof walls around the cooking areas, which is kind of like how this has come out. Nice kitchen vibe, I think, there. I'm going to head on outside. And there's not much going on out here, but you can get a bit more of a look at how I've run the cables around. Sort of tucked them out of the way, out of sight, keep them out of the way of the door as well. And uh, we've got on the back here a little shack, as you can see. This is just so that I've got somewhere to tuck my generator so it doesn't get shot up too much. But I've also squeezed the symptomatic and the decon arch in here as well. So uh, plenty of power and not much room in here, but it's kind of a if you need to use it, you can option. For the roof there, I've got um, the flat roofs from the abandoned mine set. And to get that cable to run through from the generator, basically what I did was put an angled roof on there, hit it with the flamethrower trap so that it destroyed it. And then I was able to run the cable straight through from that. At that point, I just repaired it and then converted it back to a flat roof and problem solved. And I wanted a flat roof so it didn't um, overlap with the windows there. And it has worked rather nicely, that. I've a nice bit of decoration around here. Some slightly odd choices of decoration on my sideboards on the right here, but uh, my options at the time were a bit limited, so... I really do need to run around and find a whole load more kitchen-themed stuff to put on those uh, Thanksgiving sideboards in there, the display cases. Tuck my shelter entrance in under the stairs there. I do like doing that. It was a really tight squeeze, but uh, I managed to get it in. Just pulled the foundation out there after the stairs were in and just slid the shelter entrance in underneath, lifted it up and dropped the uh, foundation right back in. Went quite nicely. So our conservatory greenhouse that is also our crafting space has come together really nicely. I'm quite happy with how much detail I managed to get in here. I did think I was going to struggle on that. Turned out I managed to get plenty in, which I'm really pleased with. Got to use the... Uh, chemistry bench there. It was from a season a little while ago, so it'll probably pop up in the Atomic Chop if you haven't had the chance to get it, but it's cool. Requires a lot of space, but I do like that chemistry bench, and I haven't used it in a while. So we will duck through our power armor station, have a look at our brewing stations, and uh, the rest of the benches down this end. A little bit more detail on the walls here. Had to put the Sheepsquatch poster in, because the quest that you can activate from that poster is necessary to be completed. You have to have that completed so that you can then get quests in the new update. So thought it would be appropriate to have that there. And the last few benches here. There is plenty of room to get out all these benches and to activate all the benches. They do all work, which is cool. I have tested them all, so I'm very, very happy about that. Definitely like the way this has come out because it's quite compact, this space. I'd initially thought about having this greenhouse two foundations wide instead of just the one. But I think the proportions wouldn't have looked as good if I'd done that. And uh, also decorating it would have been a challenge because, as I say, we're right at the limits. So really, really pleased with how this has come together. Got the crypt flooring in there at the minute, which I quite like. I could possibly have used the red um, flooring that's quite similar. It's also available, but I think it might have been too red, that. But, uh, a fair bit of red already in this build. Let's have a swing around and head upstairs. 
I've used the log cabin staircase here because, firstly, it sits next to the wall, which uh, definitely looks better and allows the hallway to function a little better. And also, it's the only one that has a decently matching floor set, so it doesn't look quite so out of place when you come up here. Still not perfect, but it's close. So, a little bit of dead space behind the stairs there. I've got the roofs on at a different angle to make the whole structure an interesting shape. Leaves us with a slight in external wall inside thing, but uh, accent walls or something. A little window tucked in the corner I'm happy about. There's a couple of very cool guns I've picked up recently. One is from the new um, update. The other one was just a really lucky random drop that I got. So, I'm kind of tempted to take those for a spin before long. Ha ha ha, one of them's a minigun. <laughs> So here is the master bedroom, and very clean and tidy this one, so I suppose it's kind of fitting, but uh, I like it, It's it's got a good vibe, it's definitely got an adult vibe to it, which is appropriate given the contrast with the other bedroom we'll have a look at in a moment. The angled roofs and the low section and just sort of different shapes and stuff give it a lot of character in here. The wallpaper, in fact both of these wallpapers in here and downstairs are um, from Halloween sets of wallpaper, they're actually some of the nicer ones that we've got available, so I kind of like that. Definitely comfy, cosy kind of vibe. I feel like that wallpaper is probably silk. But uh, it looks quite nice. Bit much negative space above the bed on the wall there, but mostly it draws your eye down anyway, so it's not too bad. And uh, I definitely do like the look of this. One gripe with this set of roofs. This set of roofs are from the Helvetia building set, incidentally. And uh, I chose them because they just kind of added a nice contrast. The flat roofs have a different texture on the inside to the angled ones. So they look weird. And I'm not very happy about that. <laughs> like, they, there's no reason for it. They could have matched. And you can't wallpaper them, so I don't get it. But it does look better from the outside, so there we go. We've got a little window at the top there. A few bits and pieces on display, including a very nice Grognax axe that I want to give a, a go to at some point as well. And Oathbreaker on the uh, side there that you get from the Brotherhood quest line. Definitely cool. Here is my bathroom, and you see now why I put the washing machine downstairs in the kitchen, because there's definitely no room for it in here. Uh, nice little sort of a glass roof up there, letting some really nice summery weather in. And yeah, everything you need, although not a lot of spare space in here. But it really doesn't need to be that much space, does there? The only thing we need is towels, and uh, sadly I haven't got those. There's the light in there. Just got the one light, but uh, plenty of light obviously in the day. In the evening you need a little illumination. That one works quite nicely behind the door there. And here we have the children's bedroom. And again, really pleased with how this came out. I think it captured the vibe really quite nicely. And the, the foosball table there. It would have been easy to go a bit overly vault in here, but I wanted to dodge that. We've got plenty of plushies, we've got magazines, we've got kind of child's bedroom appropriate posters. Decided to go for the twin beds because they've got that kind of children's bed vibe. They're small rather than using the bunk beds, which I've done in the past. But this just, I like this. Kind of spread out around the room. Looks like a kind of shared kid's bedroom. Definitely pretty happy with this. Got uh, one kid into Nuka Cola, apparently, and the other one into uh, comic books. So a little bit of a contrast in the two halves of the room, but they still kind of tie together because of the wallpaper and the whole kind of you know, somewhat childlike vibe of the place. So pretty pleased with how this has come together at different lamps. So yeah, you can really tell that two people are sharing this room, I think. But at the same time, it also kind of has a bit of a cohesive vibe. Colour schemes work quite well together. You kind of see what I was talking about with the roofs there, just in the corner. Train set is the one bit in here that I kind of don't like, because it's so darn noisy. But um, it did feel kind of like a must as well, so uh, yeah, there we go. Definitely one of the better options for a kid's bedroom. Seemed appropriate. Bit of a morbid display case there, but I didn't want to just stick fashion up masks in it, and I want to do something a bit different. And uh, yeah, looks alright. I did want to put um, weapons display racks behind it, but unfortunately they wouldn't snap that low on the wall for some weird reason. It was just being a bit finicky today. So, let's take a little swing back outside. Yeah, this uh, tour, with this place being quite big and quite detailed, took a little bit longer than anticipated. So, uh, as I say, if you guys want to see how I built this, then let me know in the comments and drop likes and all that good stuff. And I'll uh, review and probably make a separate video on how I actually built this yeah, in a couple of days, probably, because uh, it did take some doing. And, yeah, that would have been a relatively long build section, followed by a very long tour section, and this would have been a silly long video, so... 
you can see we're right by the super duper mark there which is really really cool uh spot to be placed normally people tend to build sort of behind the house down on the t-junction there a little bit and uh yeah it's nice to build up here which is about as close as i can get to actually building in town which is really cool i am so happy with the results this place looks I don't want to say it's exactly the picture I had in mind, but in the sense that it's got the angles and different textures and uh, how the stars have come together, I'm really, really pleased with it. And uh, yeah, definitely chuffed with this one. I'm going to be holding on to it. So if you guys like this video, please do drop subs and likes. I very much appreciate Check out all the links down below and the buttons as well. The social media links, merch store, channel memberships, all that good stuff that really help out. And join us for live streams as well. We are, of course, playing the new update in 76 at the moment. Having a great time with that. And checking out Forever Skies at the moment on stream as well, which has been really interesting and cool. So I do hope you join us for a few sessions of that as well. Nice chilled out time. But for now, I will say a massive thank you very much for watching. And I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.